What's going on guys? Rock Lee AC here back at it again with another fun and casual deck profile. Today I'll be bringing the Bulma Leader from set 8. She has a lot of strong effects, mostly that synergize with her ability to draw as well as make your battle cards blockers. So let's just jump straight into it. The leader itself, Bulma, on her front side, she has a permanent that says all your red and yellow Saiyan cards and Earthling cards in your battle area gain blocker. And then activate main once per turn, you can draw a card. So you don't even have to attack with her. You uh, just get card advantage right away. On Awaken, when your life is at four or less, you may choose up to two energy. Switch them to active mode and flip this card over. Then she becomes Bulma Familiar Bonds. Permanent is the same. All your red and yellow Saiyan and Earthling cards in your battle area gain blocker. Activate main once per turn. Draw two cards. So she is a leader with a lot of card advantage, uh, especially when you get to her Awakened side. Uh, so we're going to jump straight into the deck profile and talk about the cards and strategies. So first off are your multicolor cards. You have red and yellow in this deck. You got the Whis is your charge energy simply for the red and yellow count. For your quote unquote defense cards, uh, which you do have a lot, here are your negates to after image. Uh, this deck doesn't have a lot of ways to deal with board in terms of removal, so minus 10 king something off the board. Those not necessarily board removal, it can remove some of those annoying uh, early game cards, 5k uh, crit attack swings like Trunks and Gohan and whatnot. Next, two of the heroic Duo Videl. She's amazing, she negates, and she's also an earthling, so once you put her on board, you can pop her or activate Bulma's leader effect to give her a blocker ability. And then you could pop that to stop and attack as well. So that is good against super aggro hyper decks. Moving along, for Whis is your super combo. Red yellow makes it easy for a rival. You could also minus 10k something. So if you combine that with after image, minus 20k off a of battle card is a great way to get rid of your opponent's board. Next is a small draft box 5 engine featuring the universe 4 assemble card. So this says for one red energy, um, activate main, you could choose up to two skillless battle cards with 10k power in your drop area and or warp and play them. So you're able to either on the offensive, if you happen to mill your cards early through effects, you could put in play two skillless vanilla cards, 10k, um, and swing for the turn, or since your vanilla cards are Saiyans, uh, they gain blockers, so for one energy, they basically become two blockers. So that's very cool, very techy choice of mine. Next is two birthday party. Uh, this card is really great. Um, although it's cost three, you're never usually going to play that. It has a permanent. If you have a red and yellow multicolor card in your NG, uh, you could activate this card from your hand uh, without paying any cost, so it's free. Uh, if your leader card is a red Bulma, which it is, at the end of your turn you draw two, then choose two cards from your hand and send them to the drop. This is basically to filter. Make sure you fill your drop zone with your vanilla cards because you'll need them later in the game. On to the battle cards. We got four Bulma and Yielding Courage. She's super necessary in this deck. She's a cantrip. You play her for one, you draw a card, and then activate main once per turn. You could pay one random color. Choose up to one red or yellow Saiyan card in your drop area with energy cost of one. Negate its skills for the turn and put it in play. And if you did, mill the top two cards of your deck. So she gets back your, uh, well, intensifying power trunks, which I'll show you. Also, some of your vanilla cards that can become blockers as well. She is also an earthling, so she turns herself into a blocker. You'll notice a theme. It's very defensive from there. Next three cards, forgive me for my proxies, even though this is an uncommon, for some reason I can't find my other two copies, but this is essentially what you will play in this deck um, because you play Bulma. So this Vegeta, 
is a 5 cost, but he comes in play for free if one of your Bulma cards is removed from play due to a skill or is KO'd. Uh, you can only play one of these in the field, but once the Bulma gets dropped or KO'd or removed through a skill or whatever, uh, Vegeta comes into play. He's a 20k double striker. He is also uh, able to um, be a blocker as well. So very cool combination there. Vegeta helps you become a little bit more aggro in the early game if you need to against certain decks. Next, three intensifying power trunks. He could help you self-awaken. He's crit 15k. Your leader ability, or at least the leader card power, isn't as strong because you're a 5k on the front and 10k. So you need some battle cards to really swing at your opponent to apply pressure. Uh, Trunks is a great way to do that. Also helps you self-awaken if you need to, depending on the matchup. Next is one Goten rushing in. He is a one of choice for... for my side there's a lot of cards in here that i had to cut or at least make tight space for but he is just an annoying card that you could also bring out with the one drop bulma over and over again he is a one drop blocker revenge uh, with bulma's ability to make your saiyans um war earthlings a blocker so he really stops a lot of those larger battle cards from swinging because they'll be potentially uh ko'd Next is a very small package of the Sun Goku and Four Star Ball engine. I just always like this if you're playing some sort of vanilla strategy in a way. Um, you, you're not really playing a lot of the vanilla power-up support that was released in the draft box. Certain cards that give your vanilla 5k, um, but you do have some ways to power them up if you choose so. You, you also play this card because against hand control, you could just cycle in the balls from the drop zone with the Goku, put it back if they make you drop a card, and just cycle it through that. So again, a couple different ways to power up your vanilla cards and keep your hand up against those matchups. Next is the arrival, Beerus, no planned, no holds barred. He is one of the better arrival cards in the game. He could pop a 30k power less and KO it and that's mostly all the battle cards and he could also choose up to one of your opponent's leader cards or battle cards in rest mode ignoring barrier and that card cannot be switched to active mode until the start of your next main phase which is very strong against those dual attack uh, cards that like to restand just very very powerful and depending on the right cards and uh, deck this could really hurt your opponent one of the finishers of the finishers of the deck is Heartfelt Plea. He is no stranger into the meta. He could evolve over the Beerus, and he just becomes a monster with a 30k triple strike offering also as well. So they're either going to crit or life for your draw to no bad thing about this card. It's just really strong, really powerful, helps you finish off the game. On to the vanilla cards. I run a total of eight, and this can be your choice of cards i just chose them because it's thematic to the childhood chibi like characters uh, so you got baby vegeta baby son goku childhood and these are your vanilla k's of choice just for the color balance for red and for yellow you want to get these cards either in the drop zone or you could also swing them early power up with those dragon balls but mostly to abuse this card ganos which is your other finisher in the deck he is uh, one of the super rares from the draft box set. Not really played a lot, mostly in the, th the themes of vanilla, um, but he's super strong. He's a five uh, cost deflect card. He also has double strike. Um, you could also negate an attack uh, during your opponent's turn, but he'll get minus 15k. But more importantly, his activate main, you could choose two skillless battle cards in your drop area and remove them from the game. Switch this card to active mode. So a lot of applications for this. Swing in, he's your finisher, 30k double strike, combo out your vanillas from your hand or whatever you have. Then remove those two vanilla cards in the game, switch them to active mode, swing again for 30k. He does not have a restriction of once per turn, so you could do this multiple times. You run eight, so in there, the, the highest potential, you could, you could swing him for four times, 
basically restanding um, if you have the ability to put them all in the drop zone. The reality of it, you're probably not going to be able to swing four times, but two times is very likely. Double strike and then swing them into active mode uh, twice by removing those vanilla cards. So he is one of your main finishers of the deck. And the SCR of choice is the Black Smoke Dragon. Because you're drawing so many cards, comboing out, being able to use uh, the drop zone and fill them up with 12 cards because of your Bulma 1 drop or your birthday party card. It's very easy to get 12 cards in your drop zone so you can play the SCR great against uh, Surge Coup and all those other matchups. So yeah, that is basically the deck. So again, the good things about this is that it is very defensive. You have your blockers. Um, you have an increased hand size. You're able to draw two every single time on your awakened side. As well as if you have the party, you could just filter. It does have some bad sides, though. But Bulma is only a 5k and 10k leader on the front. So against those hyper-aggressive decks, they'll pressure you a lot with large amounts of attacks. So if you don't have your blockers out, you don't have a lot of defense, if they break through all that, uh, it could be trouble for you. Uh, also against some ramp decks, you are a mid-range kind of control deck, so you aren't necessarily attacking until you establish your board, your Beeruses, your vanilla cards, and the drop for Ganos. Um, so you're not really attacking, so to say. Uh, but depending on the matchup, you should attack. Like, especially against Surge Coup, you have to keep up the pressure against them. Also, like, red removal, especially, like, the cooler 5 mil, you gotta watch out for that card. But the main strategies of this is that since this is a mid-range deck, in the early turns, you want to establish your 10Ks, either you're swinging with them or you're getting your Goku to get your Dragon Balls um, and drawing cards through your leader effect. Then towards the middle, you'll want to arrival the Beeruses, pop some cards that are, you know, really, really troubling you. And then being able to filter out your deck through Birthday Party, get those Vanillas in there, drop Ganos to finish with either um, the Triple Strike or the Ganos Double Strike, Restanding, or the Black Smoke Dragon. Um, there are some cards in here that I didn't include. I wanted it to be somewhat budget-friendly. Obviously, there's some Draft Box 4 cards that I do not have that would make this deck a little bit more competitive, such as like the Draw Apes and the Counter Vegetas. Uh, you could also include stuff like Topo Negates if you want, uh, Flying Nimbus, um, but I felt like this deck was very defensive already, and you didn't want to be super defensive, and you know you wanted to have some cards that do some offensive attacks, such as like that Vegeta Double Strike, your Intensifying Power Trunks, and then trying to get Ganos uh, to be able to swing for multiple attacks. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think it's a super fun deck. You're able to draw a lot of cards, keep up against hand control, and being able to drop the red-yellow strategy is one of the best strategies in the game with Beerus into Heartfelt Plea, and then finishing off with Ganos, which I think is super cool, being able to swing 30k double strike multiple times during a turn, and bringing those back out with the, the draft box card Universe 4 assemble, and then maybe doing it again next turn. Uh, super cheeky, super fun, and... Hopefully you guys like this build. Let me know what you guys are building for Bulma or other decks around uh, during this time of quarantine. And we'll see you guys next time.